welcome back to the course on statistical mechanics we shall continue with our study of computer simulations as a primary method to implement the principles of statistical mechanics in the first part which part 1 which was in the last lecture we discussed not just the importance of computer simulations in statistical mechanics but the basic principles um, how this allows us to discuss highly complicated systems including <coughs> biological systems like uh, proteins and dna and other things in, and we, we mentioned there that there are statistical mechanics has two major techniques molecular dynamic simulation other is monte carlo they are based on two entirely different approaches and tied to our two postulates of statistical mechanics one invokes the time averaging that's the molecular dynamic simulation the other invokes the ensemble averaging which is the monte carlo simulations in this sense they are very nicely tied together and again the same thing the issue of ergodic hypothesis also comes here because <laughs> sampling of both the two will very much depend uh, will, will determine the outcome and the accuracy of the result so in this class today's class we'll continue with that i mentioned in the part one last lecture that is a fast course there are many books many many books on in comp on computer simulations and there is also large number of lectures in the youtube i strongly recommend students to read some of the books on the lectures in our book on uh, we have devoted a chapter chapter 29 uh, on basics of computer simulation and chapter 30 is more advanced topics of computer simulation and we have done it somewhat differently from other people uh, uh, but it is really tied very well with the course uh, I'll, i'll explain to you i already explained how we we use ising model to uh, explain the necessity and the implementation of periodic boundary condition and we use ising model also to the method of uh, the, the 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 method or technique of minimum image uh, that we use to count the interactions and minimize the load on the computer today we now continue again this uh, same classification molecular dynamics and monte carlo but today we'll go detail now into the methods now as i told you is a time averaging we have to generate temporal trajectory the way we generate temporal trajectory is by solving newton's equation in classical mechanics and the newton solution in equation force and mass time acceleration so the method is just solving numerically propagating a second order differential equation you go to each particle finds its position velocities its its orientation if it is like water then you find the force and torque on the molecule and then from time t to next time t plus delta t you propagate it by integrating this is called the method of quadrature which is 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 solved numerically and there are over the hundreds of years many techniques have been developed and all of them came handy in solving because it's very important that we propagate the equation for a very long time as i told you we propagate it over maybe 100 nanosecond sometimes in microsecond however individual time steps did it. many of you have done uh, a finite difference method of solving the uh, differential equations the difference here is that a that you have a large number of degrees of freedom like we have if you, even if you have thousand argon atoms <coughs> then we have this uh, 3000 now uh, position coordinates and 3000 uh, momentum coordinates and uh, these uh, forces change very quickly so in, in a liquid so the time step that we have to use is pretty small and time steps happen in the femtoseconds so now you see the enormity of the problem even less than femtosecond that some let us say that we take uh, half a femtosecond 
So now I had to propagate this equation with the 16 degrees of freedom, couple degrees of freedom by using a time step of half a frame to second to microsecond. So it is less than 10 to the power minus 15 to 10 to the power minus 6. So I have to do something of the order of this 10 orders of magnitude. So this is huge and that is the real difficulty. <coughs> How do we integrate? Well, you know, as I said, this is a finite difference method. There is one of the popular one is a position parallel algorithm where you both propagate. First you propagate the position t plus delta t and you write the stellar expansion. Then you write t minus delta t. The, the whole idea is to add them and get rid get rid of the uh, linear term. So I, I get R t plus delta t and then 2 R i t minus R t minus delta t just adding the two. So right now I do not have the uh, this is the position uh, algorithm. This is uh, I don't uh, I also get rid of when I get rid of the uh, the first term linear term I get rid of also the velocity. Uh, but I do have acceleration in AIT. So this is called position for algorithm. Very, very neat technique. Uh, then in this technique, velocity is obtained after you get the trajectory. Since you know well, positions at t delta t and t minus delta t, uh, you know the velocity as it's given on the right hand side of the equation. And you have to store the velocity, not, not only because you have to check the kinetic energy and you have to you get many many properties you need the velocity so by this way i get the full phase space information the motion of the trajectory in the full phase space but the advantage is that i don't have to store the velocity immediately and uh, so i don't need it so that has certain simplification then there is the velocity the algorithm this is very clever way of doing thing that you again uh, now you propagate both position and the velocity uh, and uh, this is again uh, cleverly there's a cleverness in uh, putting the velocity term by delta t by 2 a t and a d the whole idea is essentially to minimize the error of propagation then the frog algorithm the, the another interesting thing where rt is very easy we, Calculation of the velocity in both these two, the calculation of the velocity is the uh, tricky thing. So here you, you, you use Vt plus half delta t is in terms of Vt minus half delta t. So it's like a, you are going from t minus a, so velocity and position are uh, um, uh, staggered by half delta t. And that has the advantage that the, by doing that, your accuracy increases. And uh, if I remember correctly, the delta t, uh, the delta t square term is eliminated. So everything is linear in delta t up to delta t square. Means delta t square is eliminated, and that has a numerical accuracy. At one time, when we didn't computer was it was not that powerful. These techniques were exceedingly important because success of your mm, simulation depended on what technique we use. And <coughs> people use many. So then, integration step size. I said the classical molecular dynamic simulation is half a femtosecond to two femtosecond. Ab initio molecular dynamic simulation, where you solve time dependence, sorry, this time step because of the, the quantum decrease of freedom and because of quantum coherence exceedingly small time step so these simulations cannot be done in very more than a few even now a uh, few because again a few tens of figures again many times when we talk of very big systems we do a coarse grain the system coarse grain is essentially what you do you kind of a, 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 you have a lens and you make the lens opaque that means you now do not want the informations which are very detailed. For example, remember we did Landau's theory of order parameter and we wrote down the free energy in terms of order parameter expansion. That is an example of coarse grain description. 
that means we are not going fully to position and momentum details but we will kind of set a grid in the system uh, as, let us say cubic grid in a three dimensional system and now we average over the grid and we averaging we find out say for example the order parameters now we derive an equation of motion for the order parameter and then we propagate that order parameter so that also has a great uh, merit and it is used in systems where we do not want the atomistic details many times sometimes these days course grain system is also done where you eliminate uh, say about uh, four or five degrees of freedom like uh, i want to do a, uh, <coughs> a polymer and in polymer i have this ch3 ch2 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 then i can coarse grain it by first ch2 is one carbon atom so i eliminate hydrogen then i can eliminate then take the for example in a protein the amino acid the side chains become a sphere uh, there are then of course you have to pay somewhere so when you de develop a coarse grain description the finding the force field or intermolecular potential undergoes a lot of change because no longer you have the interaction in terms of pair atoms so you, you you have to also develop the force field so that has a lot of effort goes into that however coming back so these are the kind of things that we do the uh, different integration different quadrature technique different propagator technique by this kind of short time step we generate the trajectory once we generate the trajectory in statistical mechanics tells us what to do with it because we know the time everything we can calculate the uh, pressure by pressure by calculate the specific heat by energy fluctuation many other about radial distribution function all these things we can calculate and then our job is done so the, the summary of the steps you first create a finite box and that's what we discussed in the last lecture and then i remember the example of the ice then calculate the force on each atom and molecule and then you go through each atom and molecule and uh, uh, depending on the force and you according to neutron equation depending on the force is experiencing and the neutron equation and the uh, some what teacher like Farley uh, algorithm you move the position and moment of each molecule this is called updating uh, the update the configuration then you have the trajectory and calculate this is our computer uh, Monte Carlo which is straightforward and uh, often the method of choice and most of the packages that exist in literature most of the packages uh, like gromax charms and all these they essentially are they are all molecular dynamic simulations because molecular dynamic simulation as i explained to you is rather straightforward in classical simulation sol uh, solution of the newton's equations of motion and if it is a newton's equations of motion then I can propagate it very easily. However, the next technique and a powerful technique and often the method of choice in complex systems, if you don't want the dynamical properties, is the Monte Carlo simulation. As I discussed last day, it's Monte Carlo was play, placed in with a Campbell and Cashin water. So it has to do with a lot of random number generator and try, it, is a, it, is, it is based on ensemble average principle. But we have to let the system go to all different microscopic states. Remember, when we did the uh, uh, ensemble average or time average, basic idea is that in a time, trajectory has to go to all corners of the phase space. And Monte Carlo in ensemble, I have to take sufficient number of ensembles that all the microscopic states are captured or a fair number of, uh, fair amount of uh, microscopic states. So both have their the demand. So now, so we now discuss the Monte Carlo simulation. Okay. In the Monte Carlo simulation, <coughs> more common to calculate structural and thermodynamic properties of the system. As you can read here, he stated it is a place popular area in Monaco city. Uh, I thought it was from Fra Fra uh, France, but uh, I think you know, Monaco is mostly inhabited by France. Uh, anyway, and uh, it's an algorithm uh, called Monte Carlo algorithm, which was uh, used in a uh, metropolis algorithm where this name was introduced is a method of uh, probability theory and it is the probability theory that guarantees many of these things okay now as before i explain the things in terms of a 
Ising model and again one dimensional Ising model. So I wrote down the one dimensional Ising model with this Hamiltonian that we have done. And if you have a ferromagnetic interaction, <coughs> then the Hamil I have the Hamiltonian uh, that is uh, two up spins are, uh, are, are uh, when two spins are parallel, the energy is less. Now, it is a wonderful thing to do a Monte Carlo simulation on this to explain Monte Carlo simulation on that. So, first I generate a initial uh, configuration by go to each lattice right side. I call it random number <coughs> and that has value between 0 and 1 and if it is less than 0.5, I make it up. It's uh, greater than 0.5, I make it down. So, I can arbitrarily create a configuration. This is the beauty of Ising model. Now, I wanted to Monte Carlo simulation. From there, I of course sample the equilibrium configurations and in uh, one dimensionalizing model, the additional advantage is that we have the analytical results. So, whatever I get by computer solution, I can check it. Next. And it's a, actually plays a very good starting point, and I all recommend all of you to do it. This simple calculation here that I have going to outline to you. So, randomly select the screen by using a random number generator, then you find that among its neighbors, we have three possible arrangements. Both the neighboring scenes point downwards. Then it's an unfavorable configuration. One spin up in, um, among, its, um, among its neighbors and one spin down. Both the neighbors are in the up position. Now, we consider the energy of these three cases are different. So, if the select spin is up directed as we've done here, energy decreases when it spin, uh, spin flips. By the way, this is exactly the example which has been done in my book. And uh, I, I did it by all these things in terms of Ising model so that the, it is easy for students to understand. Now, if the, now there is certain things. In a Monte Carlo simulation, it's very important that you do a relative, that means a relative uh, movement. That means you favor those uh, moves those who lower the energy. So, you can easy, easily know now that if I ferromagnetic interaction, if I spin rates, the tag spin, if I flip down, then energy decreases and that is accepted with unique probability. Now, energy remains the same. If it happens, energy remains the same with the, after the flip, not in this case, but <coughs> if, if my one spin is up and another spin is down, that configuration this will happen and then I take that configuration, the change configuration with half probability. However, if it increases, then there are two situations and it's very interesting. If it increases, then you accept, but you accept with the penalty. By doing this, these choices, you bias the system to low energy configuration. Why? Because it's a Boltzmann told us that these properties of the system are weighted by e to the power minus beta e. This is the graph of the Monte Carlo simulation. So here I have told you <coughs> that if now if it, 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 it have two condition, it can flips and if it flips <coughs> then it is accepted with unit probability. However, if it is a no flip, then it is like that. But however, if it flips, this picture is not 100% correct. It should be, it would be down and down is going up. If down going up, down going up, like actually the, on the upper egg one, then energy going up. Then we accept with the probability such that probability is conserved. But with the penalty, as I told you, so, flip probability, that means from <coughs> raised spin down to going up, that will be in the change of energy is delta E, then E to the power minus beta delta E1 plus E to the power minus beta delta E. And then we consider no split. <coughs> you say no. I, I now open the option that I will have, have, I will have no spin flip. Then that will have a probability 1 minus that. So, so, so probability must be conserved. So, if, if there is energy goes up, then I have the option 
that I am going to stay in my same configuration. So that is given by the my bottom equation. So these two must be added to unity as I show in the graph. Again, to remind you, there is a mistake in the figure here. The red tag on the extreme left should actually be down. Now, this, this what I described right now to you is the one with the uh, spin discrete dynamics. But many times, as you know, Leonard Jones water will have a uh, potential that is uh, continuous. In that case, what the way we do is very interesting. We take one of the n particles and compute all the interaction. You can easily guess what will happen compared with the interaction to all the other particles. Then we now utter the coordinates by random variables, move the particles a little bit, and then we calculate the energy. If the energy goes down, we accept it. But if energy goes up, we exactly do the same thing. Again, do we uh, if energy goes down, then you accept the move, it goes zero. Then again, we do the same thing. We accept the move. Oh, oh. Now, one more thing I am saying in here. <coughs> we just, um, as a model, we took no slip, uh, no flip. In this case, no flip means that uh, we, we, don't, we don't make these changes of my 3N position coordinates. But, here we call a random number r and if my e to the power minus delta is greater than r then i accept that means when the energy increase is not very large why we do that because if we keep on neglecting all the moves then it becomes very very demanding and we don't get good. so many times we have to go up the hill go up little bit then go down so, but if I reject all the moves where energy is going up, then that will be, <laughs> might sometimes trap me in a very uh, small minima and also my statistics become poor. So, in this case, we, even when energy goes up, we do the Boltzmann factor and if Boltzmann factor is e to the power minus beta e is, is e to the power minus delta u, del, that is delta is not very large and positive so this is the technique that i just explained to you is essentially the metropolis algorithm that uh, uh, so what essentially now we are going to do that the what we do need in uh, essentially the calculation of the partition function or calculation of average that's what interesting mechanic is we calculate the average is over Boltzmann factor. So in this case can be measured as a predetermined set of points in the configuration space. And then the metabolic method constructed random walk. That's why the value of the indicant is negligible. So what we do the uh, that when energy goes up very high, then we neglect that and we can create one more move on the uh, uh, one more move or rather a mark, mark, create a Markov chain and then we continue. So it is as if we are propagating a trajectory but the pro propagation in the trajectory is not following Newton's laws of motion. It is following Boltzmann factor and so and call, calling a random number again and again. So this random number again and again as I said it has to be a Markov chain in the sense they have to be independent of each other and these random numbers will allow me to move every atom in uh, in, in a random in, in its own three dimensional space random directions and by random amount and then i <coughs> calculate the energy so this is the metabolic algorithm as i said it's completely controlled this is what in flowchart i described is a little bit small but you will be able to read young guys so you generate the move, calculate the energy, accept it if energy is low. If energy goes up, then accept it with a penalty. So this is goes on there a little bit more detail because one thing that we want to implement is, is, is what is called microscopic reversibility. That means you are going to a place 
and you should be able to come back and that thing since we are in equilibrium is extremely this is essential the concept that introduced by Onsager in terms of uh, uh, yeah microscopic reversibility <coughs> and uh, in chemistry you already knew it in terms of detail balance but detail balance is not has the, is not microscopic reversibility is more detailed and much more uh, profound therefore the microscopic reversibility means the probability of going to a place and the probability of in the initial position and probability of going to new position is equal to probability of the new position into probability back the rate of coming back so this thing this microscopic reversibility is essentially what we use in chemistry all the time k12 p1 k12 is p2 k1 and that uh, going back and forth and that has to be maintained so that is a very important quantity so that 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 has to be implemented in choosing the scheme and the in, in in doing the transition probability from one state to other state because that guarantees very important my, my point is that that guarantees that you are in equilibrium because microscopic reversibility is the condition of equilibrium so every move must obey microscopic reversibility otherwise you can go away from equilibrium and monte carlo algorithm is something we study on the equilibrium system yes we can study non equilibrium system but that is required far more uh, demanding that we are not going to discuss what we are discussing here is the uh, equilibrium systems and where microscopic reversibility must be enforced many studies were went wrong because microscopic reversibility both in analytical and numerical was not obey okay so here is the acceptance rejection the ratio is very similar to what i did in case of uh, Ising model so i am not going to Go into detail, but one has one, one, one ha random two random number generator. This same thing I described a couple of times, but the, but one has to <coughs> make sure that you are in equilibrium and you are also increase the the rate of your your exploration uh, rate of the exploration of the confusional space. You don't want to do it so slow that. You don't go anywhere. If you do not accept moves which are going up, for example, you are just uh, will not go anywhere much of the time. So here again, the flow chart uh, with the Monte Carlo simulation in one dimensional Ising model. We did that <coughs> before. But there is an important thing that you often use is called important sampling. Important sampling is a name of, is that. As I told you that uh, problem of Monte Carlo simulation, also in molecular dynamic simulation, the problem is that once we the system goes into a trap or kind of deeper minimum, the system doesn't come out of that. This is a terrible, terrible problem in uh, molecular dynamic simulation, and many molecular dynamic simulation were uh, wrong because the system that was Simulated was stuck in the in the minimum. However, uh, this the minimum might be only a small part of the uh, uh, that particular minimum where the system is stuck because there are many other domains which need to be explored to get an average. And these the kind of things are done by important sampling. <coughs> Most important. Um, that is, is, is also rare events like the uh, chem, chemical kinetics when the uh, product the reactant and the product are separated by a large barrier by high, high free energy barrier as we have emphasized the monte carlo using metropolis algorithm essentially ensures a boltzmann averaging over configurations and boltzmann sampling of the configurations important sampling on the other hand tries to go where Boltzmann probability distribution is very small. So conventional metropolis algorithm doesn't work. As we already said, these are the rare processes like in phase transitions. So if one has to go over a large free energy barrier, even obtaining the free energy barrier is very important. <coughs> the way it is done is actually quite, quite, quite smart. You define a new distribution. You define another, uh, uh, a new sample from the other distribution. And then, so you write 
like here the expectation value as an integration and you define px by gx and now as a result of that the gx that you have this gives you an average over the term uh, is fx px gx and gx now you have the freedom to choose and so you choose the value gx that it is it is uh, not small in the region that you want to probe so this is most important is the uh, rare event sampling where you do not get to the barrier region and it is shown on the table right side that uh, it is uh, uh, if you go to a large barrier then you can go days to years to sample them however you can now devise a distribution like it is defined here the e to the power wx <coughs> and that <coughs> pulls you towards the distribution and is shown here that bias is wx is shown so bias is a harmonic placed exactly at the uh, maximum so that now uh, the, the minimum is placed exactly at the ba uh, barrier so coupled to, to this added together allows you sample the barrier region and this is the, i'm not going to go through the mathematics but you can easily see how a new term e to the power minus wx plus minus that has to be is introduced and then you get the sampling over the uh, this uh, region of importance <coughs> this is rather advanced technique but it's good to know so there is a drawback of the important sampling then there are some issues that must be given one is that how do you keep the temperature and pressure because these things are counted, uh, completely fluctuating and these are small systems temperature is easy to understand temperature you do by rescaling the velocity like we described here i know it is the uh, equipartition theorem and i know that velocity square uh, average of velocity square gives the temperature say the temperature goes up when temperature goes up we scale back the temperature there are many ways of doing that so the rescale uh, lowering the temperature can be done by velocity scaling similarly if tem uh, temperature falls down i can up upscale the velocity however it is easy uh, easier said than done because you have to do it systematically and you have to do without perturb the trajectory that is this, all these different methods have been done first one was done by hans anderson for anderson thermostat so he considered that there is an external bath and each molecule is undergoing a condition so <coughs> when um, it is actually essentially the system as if system the bath pervades the system and this heat bath collision frequency given by probability and that that maintains Maxwell velocity probability distribution of the particles. Then how do you control pressure? Pressure is a little bit more tricky and a little bit more dangerous. And here, uh, but uh, when you do NPT simulations, even when you do NVT simulations, like the we do uh, canonical ensemble or uh, grand canonical ensemble simulations or micro canonical. Much of the time we do micro canonical. So, but we need to get the uh, pressure correct so the many times what we do we do keep a pressure and run the trajectory stabilize the system and then you see what is the volume then we remove the pressure but before that we need the pressure and pressure is fixed by using barostat barostat is the name as you know from experiment and in this case we uh, as i said pressure is kept constant for npd ensemble by scaling the box vectors the, so you 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 just like pressure is by having a piston here you are uh, control the volume of the simulation uh, shell and there are many that again Benson, that, uh, that is uh, again use a very similar technique that Benson used here that you have a pressure we coupling barostat and <coughs> each time instead now instead of atoms and molecules you are changing the coordinate of the box it has been by uh, Perrin and Hohmann where you yeah, uh, 
you not only change this shape, you also change the size. Actually, this is a very nice uh, history. The first computer simulation of solid state phase transition was done by Anisur Homon, where it changed the shape. And that was then uh, developed much more by Perinello, who did work extensively with uh, Anisur Homon. So you are now changing the shape, uh, changing the volume, uh, changing the by, but uh, by doing that, yeah, that means your system is responsive so but doing that you can keep the target pressure so there are, as i said there are lots of packages but most of the packages are molecular dynamics packages you know like gromax lamps namd <coughs> charm as i told you that in uh, in uh, monte carlo simulations most of the time you have to write your own code uh, though there are some codes that are available in the in different books and uh, in uh, papers, but they you don't have packages like in so uh, and 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 uh, one usually is, has to be more, more creative in doing Monte Carlo simulation. Basically, this is a question I have been asked often when I give talk by experimentalists. Do you imagine some stage the experiments will be simulation will replace the experiment? That probably never happened, but it does tell you one thing is that that's. Simulations are getting more and more powerful. But more importantly, simulation gives you information that many times experiments do not get. That gives you microscopic information. And it gives you how molecules are interacting. So it gives you by mm, comparing theory and uh, sim uh, theory simulation and experiments, you know whether your force field is directly interaction. And that's the law. That's the law. Because once you know how the molecules and atoms interact, you can uh, change the interaction by some substitution and you can create new materials. So you are uh, a very powerful technique. And I, 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 I small job here uh, but I strongly recommend that you read the books and I'll take it and uh, many other books are there.